Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining me this afternoon via Skype. Oh, yeah. We've got him. Not on just the phone anymore. We're tired of that phone graphic. We're ready to see Scott in person. Scott Gerard from Fitchburg Star joins us to recap the election from last night. Scott, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. It feels good to be using a piece of, like, <laughs> mid 2000s technology finally i'm glad that i was able to make this happen you guys have been asking me for a while so this is fun <laughs> you know we're just we're just trying to get with the time scott that's that's really it here but uh no we appreciate the time as always and uh thank you uh for not only getting on to, to leading up to the election but but following up here as well uh we appreciate that in your time uh let's get right into it here uh, we kick things off with uh we have a new mayor in town uh, and uh, Scott, take it away. Yeah, so uh, Aaron Richardson, uh, District 3 Alder, uh, in his first term this year, defeated Mayor Jason Gonzalez. Uh, the margin of victory was pretty large. Uh, he, Aaron received 3,929 votes, uh, while Jason received 2,240. Uh, and, and, and I was looking over the last few election cycles, um, because there's a continued trend here of the incumbent mayors being voted out of office. This is the third straight election in which the incumbent mayor lost. Um, Jason really performed similarly to the last two incumbent mayors. Uh, in 2017, Steve Arnold received 2,221 votes, so almost the exact same. And in 2015, Sean Pfaff received 2,445 votes. So really within a, about a 200-vote range there, the difference has been what the challengers have received. Um, back in 2015, Steve Arnold, who was then an alder, received 2,517 votes, so that was a very narrow victory. Uh, two years later, he lost to Jason, uh, and Jason received 3,142 votes, so a 900-vote victory. This time it spread out to a 1,700-vote victory. So uh, uh, it, just an interesting thing with turnout going up, so much of that uh, extra turnout has gone to the challenger. Um, this was the highest turnout spring election without a presidential primary uh, since 2011. Um, so the last four elections have all had lower turnout than this. So there were a lot of people out there making their vote heard, and it was a strong statement in favor of Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. It seemed like it was pretty uh, consistent as far as uh, I was watching out the door yesterday, uh, seeing people come in to vote here uh, at the community center. And uh, yeah, a uh, pretty good uh, turnout there. Uh, turning our attention now to the uh, alder person uh, seats, all seats were up here uh, this time through. And uh, not all were contested, but uh, either way, uh, let's uh, just go through this uh, seat one, two, three, four. Take it away. Yeah, so uh, all seats were up for election for the last time. Uh, that's been a tradition in Fitchburg uh, to have a lot of uh, a lot on the ballot for voters. But uh, one of the things that changed last year was they're going to begin staggering election terms. So some of the seats that were voted on yesterday were for one-year terms. Others were for two-year terms. Um, that's one thing to mention about Aaron, too. It's just a one-year term, so that mayor, mayoral position will be back on the ballot in a year. But with the aldermanic seats, uh, District 1, Seat 1 did have a contested race. Uh, that was for a two-year term. Dorothy Krause, uh, who's been in the seat for quite a while now, uh, was facing Rich Tate, who she had defeated uh, two years ago as well. So that was a rematch, and she won again. Uh, this time it was 426 votes to 346 votes. So uh, that was the lowest turnout district, was District 1. Uh, and Scott was running for the other seat there, a one-year term, and she was uncontested. Uh, in District 2, uh, Julia Arata Frada was challenged by Patrick Stern, himself a former alder who stepped down two years ago. Uh, and that was, again, for a two-year term. Most of the seats with uh, challengers were two-year terms, not surprisingly. If you're going to run a campaign, you want the time to, to invest in it. Um, but Julia won uh, with 1,307 votes to Patrick's 584. So uh, that was a pretty strong performance for her. Uh, and similarly, Tom Clowder in District 4, the other incumbent facing a challenger, uh, received 1,150 votes to his challenger, Matthew Jones, is 767. So on the council, it was a really strong day for incumbents. Uh, the other uh, people reelected include Dan Barr to a one-year term in District 3, Dan Carpenter in District 
or sorry, Dan Barr in District 2, Dan Carpenter in District 3, uh, a new member of the council uh, in District 3 who will take over Aaron Richardson's seat um, because he is moving up to the mayor's seat and it's actually uh, Jason's former seat as well. So that, that seat has changed hands a few times now and it will uh, be held by Sarah Schrader. So, uh, and then in District 4, the other contested race was the uh, open seat as Tony Hartman is stepping down and uh, Janelle Rice defeated Ed Kinney in that seat. It was 996 to 835. So uh, a bit closer than the other races, but not really surprising given that they're both uh, new-ish names uh, to the ballot. But uh, so it'll be a very similar council that Aaron has been working with. Uh, when I talked to him last night, he mentioned that uh, he's glad to have that familiarity and experience on the council, uh, especially with something like the comprehensive plan rewrite coming up. He he said it'll be important to have people's experience out there for that. Absolutely. Uh, we also had the municipal judge. Homney was the only one on the ballot. Um, he did uh, 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 move on, if you will, there uh, with uh, 4,400 uh, votes there. Uh, let's quickly jump over to the school district, Scott, if you don't mind. Um, we did have uh, something in uh, all three school districts here. Uh, any surprises out there? No, I, I think all were kind of what was expected. You know, in both Oregon and Verona, the, there were the same number of candidates as there were open seats. In, in Verona, there was a little twist that there were two at-large candidates and the one receiving more votes was going to have a three-year term, while the one receiving fewer votes was going to have a one-year term. But the incumbent, Noah Roberts, who's the board president, won the three-year term, and that was really as expected. The most interesting school district races were in Madison, uh, where all three seats were contested. Uh, both seat four and seat five, uh, you kind of saw the writing on the wall in the primary elections, where the uh, eventual winners received more than 50% of the vote despite having three or four candidates in their race. So Ali Muldrow and Ananda Marilli, uh won handedly um, last night. And so uh, they will join Christiana Caruzzi as the other winner from last night. Her race against Colleen Care was much closer, uh, but she did prevail. And it will actually be an all-women Madison Metropolitan School District School Board. Uh, so that's an interesting outcome absolutely and uh scott we appreciate the time as always you guys will do a full wrap up uh in this upcoming paper correct yep we'll have the paper out next friday fantastic scott i appreciate the time as always and uh we'll look forward to kept catching up with you in person hopefully uh moving forward looking forward to it all right that's scott derived from fitchburg star always appreciate his time uh, we will take a quick break more to come here on talking fitchburg